Uh, you may remember that last night at this time, we broke the news that just ahead of hurricane season this year, the Trump administration appears to have transferred $10 million out of FEMA, out of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, to instead give that money to ICE for uh, jailing immigrants. Well, we got a lot of pickup on that story last night. Again, the reason we were able to break that story is because Senator Jeff Merkley provided us with a document that showed us that Department of Homeland Security had made those transfers um, out of FEMA um, instead to transfer that money to ICE for immigrant detention. I have to tell you, we have an important advance on that story tonight coming up here momentarily. Um, and our advance on that story tonight comes as all eyes are on the forecast, as Hurricane Florence does continue to barrel toward the Carolina coast. Forecasters did shift their expectations overnight in terms of the path of the storm. The models mostly now have it hitting the North Carolina coast before then making an unusual left turn. After hitting the coast, forecasters are now saying they expect it to turn left and head southwest, um, creeping inland, meaning that it could sit there dumping epic amounts of rain on the Carolinas for days. Hurricane Florence is now a Category 3 hurricane. It's got maximum winds up to 115 miles an hour. Because of how slowly the storm is moving, when I say the Carolinas could get epic amounts of rain, I mean, they're talking conceivably about 40 inches of rain in some places. Right? That's, that's more than three feet of rain. That's a lot different than three feet of snow, even. Right? Um, but this is over, a, the risk of this is in a relatively wide area um, while the storm just stalls. The storm is expected to make landfall tomorrow night or Friday morning. While we wait for the storm to hit, coastal areas, of course, are expecting not just rain and high winds, coastal areas are also expecting a big storm surge. Look at those storm surge amounts. That one in the middle says 9 to 13 feet of the sea being that much higher than it normally is. And they're saying that could persist for days as the storm makes its way west. So with a storm this big, with this kind of an expected impact, we are, uh, as a country, are bracing for impact. Uh, this is what it looked like in the Carolinas today. Businesses closed, business owners hoping and, and praying for the best. People boarding up the windows of their homes, sandbagging, anything that could be protected from expected flooding and from, again, that expected large storm surge. This hotel in South Carolina put all their patio furniture right into the pool. Maybe that'll keep it from blowing away in the storm. Uh, people who plan to stay in state to ride out the hurricane lined up for ice today because everybody's expecting all the power will go out. Others caught some of the last evacuation buses out of town to take them somewhere safe before the storm hits. Mandatory evacuations are in effect along coastal areas and in what is now a familiar sight but still strange to see. Um, lanes on many highways were reversed so cars could drive one way on both sides of the highway. Today, the U.S. Coast Guard held a briefing in Charleston, South Carolina. This is Rear Admiral Keith Smith. He's the commander of Coast Guard Force uh, Readiness Command. Um, he talked today about the basic mechanics of what the Coast Guard will do, not just during the hurricane, but after the hurricane hits. You know, and as worrying as this impending storm is, admit it, it's, it's somewhat reassuring for us as Americans to see the Coast Guard out in front talking about their readiness, right? Because the Coast Guard is great at what they do. And we know from past experience that the Coast Guard has been a literal lifeline over and over and over again whenever a big bad hurricane hits the United States. Lester Holt has been covering the southern end of Hurricane Sandy. He's in Elizabeth City tonight. Lester, good evening. Brian, good evening. A dramatic rescue at sea today. A 16 crew members aboard a uh, 180 foot tall ship had to uh, go overboard, abandoned ship when they took on water. Two people were missing. Late word tonight, though, one of those people has been found, a woman described as unresponsive and flown to a hospital here in Elizabeth City. That boat was, that ship was on its way from Connecticut to Florida trying to steer around the storm when it ran into trouble. The dramatic video shows members of the ill-fated ship's crew jumping into the heaving ocean and into the grasp of a Coast Guard rescue swimmer. 
The distress call came in last night. The ship had lost power and was taking on water some two feet an hour. The bounty and her crew were 90 miles off Cape Hatteras. And then early this morning, the 16 member crew was given an order to don their survival suits and abandon ship oh, into two life rafts. Spotted first by a Coast Guard C-130, two choppers were launched into the teeth of 58 mile per hour winds and low visibility. There was a lot of rain and a lot of wind. Uh, fortunately, going out there, it was a tailwind, so we got out there pretty quick. Uh, even though it was 180 miles, we had to go. The first chopper crew spotted one crew member floating in the water, the others in life rafts. Rescue swimmer Daniel Todd was lowered into the churning ocean. Being down there in those waves is more like uh, being in a washing machine. You know, you have these these waves kind of hitting at, hitting at you from every single direction. One by one, the bounty's crew were hoisted up into the helicopters. One of the crew members was later hospitalized with a broken arm. With storms like this, uh, it, you can easily see how violent the ocean could become. And if you don't prepare yourself properly and, and handle it the way you should, then it can come back to have some very drastic consequences. Being down there in those ways is more like being in a washing machine. That's just one. That was October 2012. That was Hurricane Sandy. Uh, the U.S. Coast Guard flying helicopters in 58 mile an hour winds, spotting that tiny little raft in terrible visibility, jumping into those violent waves to pluck those guys out of the sea, you know, waves strong enough to break your bones. But that's what the Coast Guard does. They've got capability and skills and a record of bravery and achievement in disasters like this. That's, that's just unmatched. I mean, look, 1995, Hurricane Aaron. When a 234-foot-long boat sank, the Coast Guard was there. They pulled up members of the crew one by one in these cage-like harnesses. 2005, Hurricane Katrina, a catastrophe, a national disaster. But of the 60,000 people who were stranded all over New Orleans, 35,000 of those people were rescued by the U.S. Coast Guard, grabbed off roofs, grabbed out of rolling water, and carried to safety. 2008, Hurricane Ike, the Coast Guard rescuing people in helicopter baskets to save people who tried to wait out the storm. 2017, Hurricane Maria, three people stranded on top of an overturned boat off the coast of Puerto Rico. Here's the Coast Guard plucking those guys out of the water, rescuing them from 115 mile an hour winds and 20 foot waves. Same year, 2017, Hurricane Harvey. This is the view out of the Coast Guard helicopter as they fly over Houston. They spot these guys stranded in the water, they lower down these metal cages. We've seen them use in hurricane after hurricane. This guy practically hanging out of the helicopter as he watch it, gets, watch it get lowered down. Uh, but then he yanks them to safety. And he does it again and again and again. This is what the Coast Guard does. Right? They dangle themselves out of helicopters with hurricane victims strapped to their chest. They wade through knee-deep floods to search for survivors. They scoop up families and kids in these little red canoes and tow them to safety. The Coast Guard is the life ring of hurricane response in this country, right? They're the, the muscle that yanks people out of the jaws of this kind of American natural disaster. Without the Coast Guard, I mean, we have direct evidence from these pictures, right? Year after year after year, storm after storm after storm. Without the Coast Guard as rescuers of last resort, many more people would die in hurricanes in this country. So last night we brought you the story that Donald Trump's Department of Homeland Security, the Trump administration, this summer, at the advent of hurricane season this summer, they took money out of the budget for FEMA. Just as hurricane season was getting underway, they chose to divert nearly $10 million out of FEMA to instead fund detention and deportation of immigrants by ICE. Uh, specifically last night when we brought you that story, we brought you this Department of Homeland Security document, which was obtained by Senator Jeff Merkley's office and shared first with us. It's basically a list of all sorts of places where DHS decided to take money from one agency and move it to another. The vast majority of money they were moving um, was going to upscale their ability to lock up immigrants uh, and to fund beds and detention centers for immigrant families. Now, the practice of moving money around between agencies is not unusual, we're told, right? But what stood out to Senator Merkley and what we were able to show you last night is this nearly $10 million, $9.75 million, being transferred out of FEMA on the cusp of hurricane season, almost all of it going to ICE in order to fund more detention beds 
and ICE's transportation and removal program for immigrants. Well, that was our report as of last night. Tonight, we can report that it's not just FEMA that's being tapped for the Trump administration's ICE programs instead. They're not just taking money from FEMA. According to this document from the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Homeland Security is also taking tens of millions of dollars from the Coast Guard to instead give to ICE for immigrant detention. Just over $29 million taken from the Coast Guard, targeted by the Trump administration, to be transferred instead to ICE for immigrant detention. $29 million from the Coast Guard. Triple what they took from FEMA. We asked the Coast Guard for comment on this tonight. They would not comment. We expect they're busy, given what's bearing down on the Carolina coast right now. Uh, we're redoubling our efforts to get comment from the Coast Guard. We'll let you know uh, if we ever do. But on the FEMA part of it, um, we asked Homeland Security about this document last night. They authenticated it, uh, but they told us that um, the, the money being taken out of FEMA to instead go to ICE, that money didn't come out of any disaster response or recovery efforts. That's what they said even though there are specific line items where you can see, what does it say there? Response and recovery, where money funneled out of FEMA is labeled as coming out of response and recovery programs. Nevertheless, that line of defense from the Trump administration continued today as the story spread and was reported out and advanced by other news outlets. Another Homeland Security spokesperson arguing today that the money they took out of FEMA to instead bolster their program of locking up and deporting immigrants, that money couldn't have been used by FEMA to prepare for this season's storms like Hurricane Florence that's bearing down now on the southeast coast. According to another Homeland Security spokesman, quote, the money in question transferred to ICE from FEMA's routine operating expenses could not have been used for hurricane response. So that spokesperson is essentially saying, hey, this $10 million they took away from FEMA to instead gave to ICE, it was like general money, general FEMA money. It was not like hurricane response money. It wasn't that kind of FEMA money. Um, that earned some pushback from people who used to work at Homeland Security and specifically for FEMA, uh, calling out that response today as, uh, as bullpucky. One former FEMA official named Moira Whalen told the Washington Post today, quote, anyone who knows FEMA knows this is parson words. The money being siphoned out of FEMA, she says, this uh, response money, right? Uh, it pays for plans and logistics and supply chain management. That's what response and recovery money is. Uh, joining us now is that very same former FEMA official, uh, Moira Whalen. She's a former chief of staff in uh, Homeland Security's Office of Gulf Coast Rebuilding, which was established after Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. She also worked on the first select committee overseeing Homeland Security in Congress. She spent time at the State Department as well. Ms. Whalen, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me, Rachel. So you were quoted in the Washington Post today saying essentially that the Homeland Security, the Trump administration response to this saying, don't worry about this money. Taking $10 million out of FEMA won't hurt FEMA at all. It certainly won't affect anything about the way they can respond to major hurricanes. Uh, you were quoted as being a, a, a skeptic, basically, to that response from Homeland Security. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. The the spokesperson when he responded in his in his tweets last night after your 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 great interview with Senator Merkley basically talked about how FEMA couldn't use disaster response money known as the disaster relief fund for FEMA. That money is dedicated to for any disaster. It's a different bank account for every disaster we have and is dedicated to going to individuals and to communities to recover in the wake of a hurricane or in the wake of any other natural disaster. And it's, it's pretty specific that it has to go there and can only finance additional things like phone banks for you to be able to call in your claim after a disaster. So anyone who knew FEMA at all knew that of course you can't touch the disaster, what is known as the DERF. You can't touch the DERF funds, but there are other operating expenses at FEMA and general operating money at FEMA goes to doing things like training for all hazards, preparing our warehouses, making sure we have things ready to go so that we can pre-deploy like you see FEMA doing now.
So taking money away from that operation doesn't just harm hurricanes, it harms us with any disaster that we face. And when we talk about plans and logistics and supply chain management, pre-positioning of supplies, as you were describing there, that seems like the sort of thing that we saw go so disastrously wrong, for example, in the Hurricane Maria response in, in Puerto Rico. It was one thing to say that Puerto Rico was um, in, in danger and in a fragile place when it came to the actual winds and rain of that storm. What fell apart and why Maria ended up being such a fatal disaster and nearly 3,000 Americans killed was because the plans, the supply chains, the logistics weren't managed. CBS today was broadcasting images of, of thousands of pallets of bottled water that made their way to Puerto Rico, never got distributed to people in Puerto Rico who didn't otherwise have access to water. And still to this day, a year after Hurricane Maria hit, those water bottles are sitting on a runway disused in Puerto Rico. It, it sort of seems like plans, logistics, and supply chain man change management is the, is the difference between life and death in terms of hurricane response. It, it is the difference between life and death. People who watch FEMA will tell you that last year was an unprecedented year. Three storms back to back. The FEMA administrator himself, Brock Long, said that the agency was strapped and that they needed additional support. And they didn't just say this in, in press you know, briefings. They, they put out an after action report where FEMA criticized themselves and the FEMA administrator called for the preparation of a culture of preparedness. And when we talk about that, what we're talking about is better enabling communities to get ready for things. We're talking about the exercises and the practices that FEMA would do with agencies like the Coast Guard to make sure that when they found someone on a boat, they could get that helicopter out there and save those people. Those are the things they practice well in advance, day to day, that this funding pays for. And so, you know, yes, there's, there's simply no way around it. We lost 3,000 American lives last year. We faced an unprecedented season, and, and that's simply not access, uh, acceptable. And FEMA will be the first people to tell you that. They're, they're addition, in addition, facing an unprecedented season this year. They're, as of Thursday, there will be five cyclones in the Atlantic, that some of which could hurt the United States. So we've really got to prioritize being ready. But instead, what we're seeing is an issue of priorities. This didn't, FEMA didn't make this decision. The Coast Guard didn't make this decision. Mm -hmm. This decision was made by the White House. It was made by DHS to prioritize programs that imprison people who are performing their human rights, a, a, a human right to seek asylum in the United States. They're ruining lives. They're, they're incarcerating families who don't even have a right to a hearing quite yet, instead of implementing programs that are proven to save lives at a time when we know more storms will be hitting, this, hitting our country. Maura Whalen, former official at Homeland Security and the State Department. I uh, appreciate your, your perspective on this. Thanks for helping us with this story. Thanks much so appreciated. much. Again, the bottom line here, um, advance on our story from last night. Last night, we were first to report that the Trump administration has taken $10 million out of FEMA. They did that this summer, just ahead of the hurricane season. Uh, they moved that money instead to pay for immigrant detention at ICE. We're furthering that reporting tonight by noting that in addition to that $10 million taken out of FEMA, at the same time, the Trump administration appears to have uh, at least targeted the Coast Guard uh, for $29 million in transfer of funds. $29 million taken away from the Coast Guard right in advance of hurricane season and instead given to ICE to lock up immigrants. We've got much more ahead tonight. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.